Hey everyone, Nada here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about all these RTX 4080 Super graphics cards that I have right here, because uh, even though we already know what to expect from the chip itself, it is still very important to see how these nine different models compare to each other, uh, how they perform when it comes to thermals and noise, uh, what extra features they offer, and most importantly, if you already decided to go for an RTX 4080 Super, which one of these cards would fit you best? So without further ado, let's begin. The cards we'll be talking about today are the ROG Strix and the Tough Gaming OC from ASUS, the Gaming OC and the Aero from Gigabyte that are basically a black and white version of the same design. Uh, then I have the Jetstream from Palette, the X3 model from Inno3D, the Supreme X and the brand new Expert from MSI, and of course the Founders Edition from NVIDIA. And there are quite a few things that all these models have in common. Now, first of all, they are all pretty large. So most of them range from 33 to almost 36 centimeters, with only the Founders Edition and the MSI Expert being a bit shorter. They are a fair bit wider than the PCI slots as well, so keep that in mind if you're looking at case compatibility, because you also need space for the 12 volt high power connection. Some cards, like both Gigabytes and the Palette, for example, have the connector a bit further in, so they might need less space than a card that is slimmer on paper. None of the cards are particularly light, uh, but there are definitely differences in weight between all these cards, uh, with the RG Strix and the Supreme X weighing about a kilo more than the lightest card, which is the Eno 3D X3. Now, weight isn't the only indication of quality, but cards that do use more metal and that do have bigger heat sinks are obviously heavier as well. And the heavier the card, the bigger the strain on your PCI slot. But nevertheless, uh, you should probably use a GPU holder with any of these models anyway. All of them require a 12 volt high power connector, but also come with an adapter if your power supply doesn't have that cable. And all of them have the GeForce RTX logo on the side because I guess that is what Nvidia requires. Other than that, they all have pretty different designs and whether you like it or not, uh, looks and design are pretty big factors when it comes to making a decision uh, which card to get. So let's go over each one of these models, uh, starting with the MSRP cards. Founders Edition is a beautiful and elegant all metal card. It is really well built and this new blackout version just looks fantastic in my opinion. It doesn't really have any extra features to mention like RGB or dual BIOS, so it is all about that flow through design with one fan on each side of the card. Now technically it is an MSRP card and it is supposed to cost $1,000, but Nvidia has a history of only selling these Founders Editions in very limited amounts, so they were sold out pretty quickly. The Palette Jetstream is also an MSRP model and Palette is calling it their stealthy card, so it is again mostly black and it has no RGB at all. It is a bit more classic in terms of design, so it has three fans in the front with a plastic shroud around it and a nice metal backplate on the back. It doesn't really stand out in any particular way uh, visually, but that's also kind of the point of this design. The Eno 3D X3 is another MSRP model, and it is also pretty straightforward in terms of design. It has three fans, a metal backplate, a plastic shroud, and it is mostly black and gray with no RGB. The unique thing about this model is that it is two slots thick, while every other card, in this roundup at least, is either three slots thick or even more. Now typically, this means that you can expect its cooling efficiency to be slightly worse, but if you have a case that only fits a two slot card, this actually might be an option if you want a high-end GPU. The Gigabyte Gaming OC is supposed to cost about $50 over the MSRP, and for that small premium, you get a very large card with a couple of extras. This one does come with a dual BIOS, as well as RGB behind the actual fans, uh, which will attract some attention if you're planning to vertically mount your card. The backplate is made of metal, but the shroud itself is plastic. As I said before, I do like that the power connector is pretty far in, so even though it is a very big card, the cable won't stick out much further. And the Aero OC is basically the white version of the gaming OC. It clearly has the same heatsink design underneath with a different color on top. It doesn't have any RGB LEDs behind the fans, but it costs another $50 more than the gaming OC, which 
probably isn't too much if you already decided to spend more for a completely white build. It is also very important to mention that Gigabyte does offer a four year long warranty on both of these high end cards uh, compared to three years on other models in this roundup. So that is definitely a big upside and something to consider when making your decision. The Tough Gaming OC from ASUS should also cost about $100 over the MSRP, and it just looks and feels very good, in my opinion. It doesn't just have a metal backplate, but the shroud is also metal, which definitely gives it a more premium feel. It also comes with a dual BIOS, and ASUS is the only brand in this roundup that adds more connectors on the back. All other cards have three display ports and one HDMI port, while ASUS adds a second HDMI port to the mix. The MSI Expert comes in at $150 or euros over the MSRP, but this one uh, kind of goes back to basics. There's no extras, uh, no dual BIOS, and no RGB. It kind of feels like a Founders Edition inspired design with its two fans and being all metal and sleek, but it does have a slightly different look to it that I think a lot of people will like. It is closed on all sides, so it really directs the airflow either straight out the back or through that second fan on the back plate. So if you do have a build where you really want to control the flow of air completely, this model might be interesting to you. The Supreme X is MSI's top model and it comes in at about $170 or euros over the MSRP. So it is positioned right above the expert version. And this is a proper extra large, extra heavy, a three fan card. It is almost 34 centimeters long. It weighs over 2.3 kilos, uh, thanks to its big heat sink, metal back plate, and mostly metal shroud. And it is more than three slots thick. It also adds some nice minimal RGB effects here and there and it has a dual BIOS, but no extra connections in the back. Now, I really do like that it finds a nice balance between uh, looking impressive without being too much over the top. And it is also the only dual BIOS card that ships with its quiet BIOS as default. But I'm gonna talk about that a bit later. And in the typical ASUS style, the ROG Strix card is the largest, the heaviest, and the most expensive model of the bunch. It does have some red and blue details on the shroud, which really stand out. So you really need to make sure that they will work with whichever aesthetic you have in mind for your build. It adds dual BIOS, it has an extra HDMI port on the back, and it adds a lot of RGB as well as some extra fan headers so you can connect extra fans directly to the card. At a 25% price premium over the MSRP, it is very expensive, so you have to ask yourself if it's worth spending that much on a card that won't be that much faster than the rest, but I'm gonna talk about performance a bit later. So the official boost spec of the RTX 4080 Super is 2550 megahertz, but in reality, all these cards boost way higher than their specs, so it's becoming a pretty meaningless statistic, I would say. Uh, with these nine cards, the Supreme X ended up with the highest clocks on average, followed closely by the two ASUS cards, but the Gaming OC, the X3, the Founders Edition, and even the Aero aren't that far behind. Only the MSI Expert and the Pallet Jetstream clocked a little bit closer to 2700 megahertz, which is still above their own spec. Now looking at the memory clocks, all cards report the exact same speed, so none of these cards come with uh, overclocked memory out of the box. And if we look at how these numbers translate into games, the difference is actually pretty small. In Cyberpunk 2077 on 1440p resolution, the difference between the fastest and the slowest card is 4 FPS, or only 2.7%, which is something you will never notice while gaming. But it is interesting that the order of the cards does change a bit, which just shows how close they all are in terms of gaming performance. In Starfield on 4K resolution, we're now looking at a difference of one frame between all nine cards, which is basically nothing. So realistically, buying a more expensive 4080 Super will not get you a faster card, and the chances of you actually noticing a difference in gaming performance between any of these nine models are pretty much close to zero. But the difference in thermals and noise is something that you can actually notice. In idle, every single one of these cards will turn their fans off completely, so they're all as quiet when they have very little to do. 
but under load there is a big difference between the quietest MSI Supreme X or ROG Strix card and the loudest Eno 3D X3 model. The Gigabyte cards are pretty audible as well in their default setting, but from there on, the rest is actually pretty quiet. The Founders Edition and the Expert are hard to hear even on an open test bench, the Tough is barely audible at all, and the Palette actually does really well here considering it is one of the cheaper cards. If you were gaming with a headset on or even with speakers, uh, none of these should bother you at all. But if you really want to go even quieter, the dual bias cards do give you that second quieter alternative. In case of the ROG and the tough cards, the silent bias basically makes an already quiet card completely silent. But in case of gigabyte cards, which are a bit too loud by default in their performance bias, the silent bias hits that performance to noise balance much better. Looking at the core and hotspot temperatures, we usually see that the louder cards get lower temps and vice versa, and that is definitely the case for the Gigabyte cards. But the ROG, for example, is only just behind them while being much quieter, so it is technically more efficient. And the Supreme X looks very good as well here, considering how quiet it is. The Founders Edition and the Tough Gaming looked completely fine, and so did the Palette, and technically, none of these results are objectively bad, and they're all well within limits, but I have to say I kind of expected to see the Expert a bit higher in the graph, uh, considering it's one of the more expensive cards. Anyway. All the memory temps looked fine as well. Uh, these memory chips are definitely able to run much hotter than even 70 degrees. But again, I did expect to see MSRP cards close to the bottom of the graph and premium cards closer to the top, which isn't always the case. And just like with boost speeds, uh, there's also variation in actual power consumption between uh, each of these cards. Now, part of this is just sample specific, like there is nothing Gigabyte did specifically to make the Aero draw 11 watts more than the Gaming OC, but there is also differences in the board design and the tuning of the cards. With a 30 watt gap between the lowest and the highest power card, it is definitely something to keep in mind if you game a lot and if you pay a lot for your electricity. Anyway, uh, let's round all this information up. The good news is that none of these cards are bad in any way. All of them are more than capable enough and none of them show any problematic results in any area. 4080 Supers are selling out pretty quickly right now, so if you're in a situation where uh, you really want to get one and your choice is very limited, I don't think you can really go wrong with any of these nine models. But assuming the supply situation gets a bit better and you have some cards to choose from, I do think that the main thing to take away from all this should be that the more expensive cards will not get you significantly better gaming performance. If you just want the best value 4080 Super, MSRP cards like the Founders Edition and the Palette Jetstream should be the first ones to look at. Uh, they're not loud at all and they're more than cool enough. The Inno 3D X3 is a bit more of a niche card made for smaller cases and because it is smaller it is noticeably louder and warmer than the FE or the Jetstream so it shouldn't be my first choice if you have enough space for a bigger card, but it's a good option for cases that don't fit bigger and thicker GPUs. Paying more than MSRP can make sense if you want a specific look, a specific feature, or if you really insist on getting an even quieter card. I don't think there is anything wrong with paying a bit more for the RGB or dual bias of the uh, gaming OC from Gigabyte, or if you really want the white arrow because it fits your white build much better but I would go for the quiet bias on both of those cards because the default bias is a bit louder than I would like it to be. And these Gigabyte cards are the only models that offer an extra year of warranty, which is always nice and quite valuable in my opinion. The MSI Expert is in a tough spot in my view. I like the fact that they're trying something new and something different in terms of design, uh, but I don't think the performance you get justifies a $150 price premium. I think it can make sense as a Founders Edition style card that's actually in stock that you can actually buy, but definitely not at its current price. Uh, and then especially so when you can get a Supreme X for about $20 more, which runs much cooler, it is a much quieter, and it is just much better overall. 
The ROG Strix, as usual, doesn't really make any sense from a value perspective, but it performs extremely well and it does have the most extensive feature set. Now, usually, I would say that ROG versions of any chip that isn't the most high-end one uh, don't really make sense, but considering that all 4090s nowadays cost a lot more than they used to, the price premium isn't as much of an issue for this 4080 Super model. That being said, I still think it is too expensive and that other models make more sense, but I also know that a lot of people just like ROG as a brand and are willing to spend more just to get that one. And then we have the Tough Gaming OC, which is also a card that nicely justifies its very reasonable price premium. It looks and feels more solid than MSRP cards from most brands. It performs well overall. It is tuned well right out of the box. It has the second bias for a proper near silent mode and it gets you an extra HDMI port. So as long as you don't care too much about RGB, I think this is the more reasonable choice if you decide to go for an ASUS card. So if you decided to go for a 4080 Super and you didn't know which one to choose, I hope this video was helpful at least a bit. Now that is all from me for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end. If you like videos like this one and you want to see more, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.